Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Midweek. I am Justin Patterson alongside Mr. Dennis Cottrell. And boy, we have a fun topic here mm. this evening. So how tonight is gonna go is we're gonna look at three attributes in one. And this we're continuing in this series on the attributes of God, but we're gonna look at three in one. We're gonna call it the omnis of God. It's words that, that we've heard before, that God is omnipotent, He is omniscient, and He is omnipresent. And what we're going to do, this is, is kind of a, a unique uh, twist on it. We're going to look and see what the Scripture says about each of those attributes. But what we're going to do is we're going to take people to the New Testament. We're going to show examples from the life of Christ of how He fulfilled all of these and how He maintained these uh, these attributes while here on this earth. Yes. Well, one of the things I also want to mention is that um, it's been my conviction that whenever I lose the, um, the awareness of the attributes of God, mm -hmm. I have a much more of a, of a human tendency to sin, to uh, to do dumb things mm -hmm. that the one of the great benefits of understanding the attributes of God is that I know he's watching he's with me he listens he knows my intents my heart um, the intents of the heart and so mm -hmm. the bottom line is we, we see this as a time when we can uh, encourage ourselves to live a life that that reflects the attributes of Christ and mm -hmm. reflects his godliness. Mm -hmm. And so as we look into this, it's, it's, it's there's real benefits to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes from, I come back from the, from the experience when I was a, a director of the Juvenile Detention Center in Bentonville, mm -hmm. that I had films everywhere, I had video, but I had audio as well. Mm -hmm. And when some mistake was made by a staff, I could use that as a teaching tool Right. But if they did not, or let's say a resident did not uh, care mm -hmm. or did not want, didn't, were not aware that we're watching all the time, they would have a tendency to do something that would fall in that category of dumb. Mm -hmm. And so um, once they learn that this is on film and it's on audio, that there are going to be consequences mm -hmm. that help them mm -hmm. in making better decisions. Right. And just like we as adults do the same thing, when we see an officer on the side of the road and we know that we're spinning, uh, speeding, at that moment we're very much aware that there's going to be some consequences, mm -hmm. most likely. So uh, it, 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 it acts as a little bit of a deterrent. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at the benefits yeah. and understand them. And uh, we'll go from there. We'll have fun with this. Yeah. So what we're going to look at, we have the, the three words, and I've got them up on the screen right now. We have omnipotent. That means God is all-powerful. And a good way to remind yourself of how, how to keep these straight, when something is very potent, something uh, it's very powerful. Like if you think of a uh, like orange juice from concentrate or something, it's very potent. It's very powerful. It's when you put mix it with water, um, you dilute it, and it becomes um, just regular orange juice. The second is omnipresent. That means that God is present everywhere. And the last one is God is omniscient. That means that God is all-knowing. And so with each of these things, like, like I said, our format tonight is going to be we're going to look in uh, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament as far as scriptures go that help back up these points. But with each of these, we're going to look at it through the lens of, of a, a gospel example to help us kind of understand that when Christ was, was here on this earth, that he did reflect these attributes of God. So going back to our um, teaching, I think it was two weeks ago, God doesn't change. He does not change from when one day to the next or from one covenant to the next. So we'll start with the first one, that God is omnipotent. That means that God is all powerful. We think of God and we are reminded that he is the creator mm -hmm. of, this, of this universe, that through his words, he spoke this universe into being. And so I want to look at, at Job 42 verse 2. And this is Job speaking. This is after Job had been through everything and Job was in the process of being restored. He says, I know that you can do all things. This is in his prayer to, to God. I know that you can do all things and that no plan is impossible for you. And I also want to look at Jeremiah 32 verse 17. 
This is the prophet Jeremiah speaking, saying, O Lord God, O Lord God, behold, you yourself has made, had made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. So those two scriptures right there tell us that God is all powerful. And we could talk at length. We could talk exhaustively about his power. But I also want to point out, um, I don't have the scripture on, on the screen, but in Genesis chapter 18, when you have the angels come in to visit Abram mm -hmm. and Sarah, and they said, Sarah, you're going to be pregnant. And she laughed. Mm. And they said, hey, why'd you laugh? She's like, well, I didn't. And, you know, that kind of thing. But what Abram was talking about is nothing, even Sarah being advanced in age, nothing was too powerful for God to do. Yes. And so we see that, that in these Old Testament examples that there is nothing that is too powerful for God. He is all powerful. Yes. And it, as we go to the New Testament and Matthew 8, verses 23 through 27, uh, you remember the, the disciples were getting ready to go across the, the Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. and there was a great storm in, in that area of the Sea of Galilee. The storm's coming from the north from Mount Hermon, and it's known for how quickly things develop. Mm -hmm. And these men were fishermen primarily, mm -hmm. and they knew what the area was like, yet they find themselves in this midst of this storm, and and Jesus over here is not paying much attention to them. Mm -hmm. I think he's taking a he, siesta. He was asleep. Yeah, yeah he's taking a, he was yeah. like me. He's taking a siesta at uh -huh. that point. And they came to him and they woke him up and, and they said, you know, help us out here. Why, why, are you, why are you, you know, and he says, why are you afraid? The, and then he spoke and he rebuked the sea mm -hmm. and the storm, and it became perfectly calm. And the men were amazed because who is this man mm -hmm. that he can can speak the words to a storm and right. it calms down? Now, he could do a lot more, but these are and that this is an example of him using his power. Mm -hmm as a means to help the, the, the disciples understand who he was. Right, his, his true nature. His true nature. Yeah. And uh, when, we, when we understand that, that same effect can happen to us. If we understand what we're going through and we understand that he is in charge and he's all-powerful, there is a sense there are times when mm -hmm. God manifests himself in such a way. Mm-hmm that he calms the storms. Yep. And then there are times in our experience when he chooses not to. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have to understand that Jesus is God mm -hmm. in the flesh. But there are, in his humanity, there are times he's limited himself. Right. He's all powerful. Another example is when he, he healed people and, and mm -hmm. uh, as he was going through certain parts of Galilee in, uh, in the, even in the Jerusalem area, there were times that he healed all manner of illnesses, mm -hmm. and then there were times he chose not to. Right. But it certainly demonstrates he had the power to do it. Yeah. And that's what we want to point out. Yep. And, and so kind of going back to our original premise that, that God is omnipotent, that means we see in the Old Testament with these examples that God the Father is those things. He is all-powerful. But God the Son here on this earth was all-powerful as well. And like what Dennis just pointed out is, did he have the power to heal everyone? Absolutely. Did he go and heal everyone? No, he didn't. So that's the first one. God is omnipotent, that he is all-powerful. The next one is omnipresent. God is ever present. And so I've got two verses from the Psalms here. Uh, Psalm 33 verses 13 and 14 says, the Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of mankind from his dwelling place. He looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He also says in Psalm 139 verses 7 through 10, the writer of the Psalm says, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take up the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will take hold of me. So that is talking about God being 
everywhere all at the same time. And so we see that in the Old Testament. So let's look at a gospel example. Well, in Matthew 18, in verse 20, uh, the scripture says, uh, where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. And this is when Jesus is speaking. Right. Every once in a while I see somebody say, we invite the Holy Spirit to come be in our presence. Well, if there's two or three of us, Mm -hmm. we're, we're in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We don't have to invite him. He's there. Right. He promises to, to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes we find ourselves asking him for what he's already given to us. Mm -hmm. Well, the issue is being aware of his presence, mm -hmm. accepting by faith that when he says he's going to be in our midst, mm -hmm. we can trust him for that. Yeah. Now, we may not feel, like we may not feel spiritual. We may not, there's all kinds of things that, that hinders or a perception, mm -hmm. but where two or three are gathered in my name, his promise, I, Jesus speaking, am mm -hmm. in the midst. Yep. Now, in his humanity, does that mean that he could be in Galilee and uh, Jerusalem at the same time? No, because the Lord has certain limitations by this physical earth. Okay. A good example of, of this would be something like gravity. Could God make an apple float in the air? I think that he could. Mm -hmm. But he didn't because there are limitations here on this earth that if he threw an apple up in the air, it's not going to stay there. It's going to fall to this earth. So there are certain limitations that he, and the, this is the point to stress, voluntarily gave up. Yes. That it's not that he couldn't do anything because we believe that yeah. God could do anything that he wanted to. But he couldn't be in all of these places physically on this earth at the same time. Now, for us as new covenant believers, we know that the Holy Spirit was poured out once and for all on the day of Pentecost. And so now when we, you and I right here and you who are watching this, when there are two or more gathered in my name, that he is there in the midst of us. Mm -hmm. So now through the helping of the Holy Spirit, through the working and the ministry, of the Holy Spirit, we see that Christ is there in the, the part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to point people to Christ yes. in a situation such as this. Yes. Well, it's just, a, again, it's, a, it's one of those things, many times we don't think about it until we get to a point like this, but just knowing that he has voluntarily limited himself in his humanity, mm -hmm. um, but he gives us examples he gives us illustrations of those um, of each of those attributes and the people as they watched them they, they were always amazed mm -hmm. at well that looks like God doing that mm -hmm. forgiveness of sins only God can forgive sins right and when he did that it made many of the uh, you know those unbelievers angry mm -hmm. The Pharisees reacted to that, knowing that yeah. he was saying that he could forgive sin. Mm -hmm. that, that just made him mad. Yeah. But this, it was one of those things that only he can do. Mm -hmm. So the, the fact that he he cannot in his, he could not in his humanity be everywhere at the same time. Right. But he is everywhere at the same time in spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why he left this earth as the Holy Spirit came in to do its work and his work mm -hmm. uh, in his ministry. Then because of today and the work of the Holy Spirit, he can be everywhere at the same time mm -hmm. if he so chooses. Yep. So we have covered that he is omnipotent, meaning that he is all powerful. And we just talked about him being omnipresent, which is him being everywhere at the same time. And now the last one we're gonna look at is that he is omniscient. And this means that God is all knowing. And let me give you just a, a couple of, of quick examples that are up here on your screen. This means that he has infinite awareness, understanding and insight, also complete and universal knowledge. In other words, nothing surprises God. So you can see Psalm 147 verse five says, great is our Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. Acts 124, which we just looked at uh, here in our, our Sunday service, it says, and they prayed and said, you Lord, who know the hearts of all people, 
show which one of these two you have chosen. Now this is referencing uh, the, the two, it was uh, I think Joseph called Barsabbas and Matthias. It was chosen down to, to those two guys. But notice in their prayer it says, and they prayed and said, you Lord who know the hearts of all people. So even in the what was about to be the early church, they recognized that attribute of God that he is omniscient, that he knows the hearts of all people. Or in other words, he has unique, well, yeah, unique is a good word, unique insight into the hearts of people. And let me show you this. I'm going to put this back up on the screen. This is found in John chapter 2, verses, 20, uh, verses 24 and 25. This is when Jesus was in the temple early, early in his ministry. The people began to applaud him and say, wow, Jesus, you're, you're awesome. You can do all this. Watch what his reaction was. John 2, 24 says, but Jesus on his part was not entrusting to uh, himself to them because he knew all people and because he did not need anyone to testify about mankind for he himself knew what was in mankind. So here I kind of stole your thunder. I, I, I gave the, the gospel example here, but this is to, to let you know that God is all knowing. He was back then, even in the old covenant, the old Testament, as well as in the new Testament that he had that understanding. And I'm going to kind of tack another one on top of this, that uh, the prophet Jeremiah chapter 17 talks about the human heart, that it is wicked by what we would say our default setting is we are wicked people because of our sin nature. Christ comes to make that heart new and it is through his work that we can be counted righteous. But John, uh, John's record of Jesus with this example speaks volumes because Christ at the time in his earthly ministry, he knew what was in the hearts of people. Yes. And you remember those times when he when he was referred when he was in the temple and he was teaching some of the elders, so to speak. They were they were amazed. And because he was still at that point was a was a young man. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't just a prodigy. He's not just a, a, a very intelligent person. But in his humanity, he still had knowledge way above them, and it really right. got their attention. Uh, an example that I think of is in Luke 22, verse 61, where it says, The Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had told him before rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. Mm -hmm. Think of all the times that in advance, Jesus knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And here is an example. Peter didn't believe for one minute that he was going to deny the Lord. That's not right. that's not in his even on the uh, one of those possibilities. And mm -hmm. yet he found himself doing it because right. the Lord had prophesied it. Mm -hmm. And and so the whole point being, he is omniscient. He doesn't always um, he doesn't always manifest that that particular attribute. Right. He chooses to at times and chooses to remain silent at times. Mm -hmm. But he's still who he is. Yeah. And as we are aware of these three attributes, mm -hmm. it will help us both to be encouraged to see the greatness of God. Mm -hmm. And so many times in our lives, we lose that, um, that awareness. Mm -hmm. We lose the consciousness of the greatness of God. And that's when we find ourselves slipping into um, doing the wrong things. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you this week, um, we, we kind of hopefully gave you just the, the tip of the iceberg, but we hope and, and we pray that this study helps prompt you into your own study. And I encourage you to look at um, the, the three omnis that we talked about, the omnipotence, the omnipresence, and the omniscience of God. Look at that in light of the gospel accounts, even in the book of Acts, you can, you can see things in there. But I encourage you to, to go and, and read that for yourself and uh, see if you can jot down some of the, the good things where you see these attributes show up in the life and ministry of Christ. You would be surprised at how often these things do pop up. Sometimes they're not super blatant, um, but they are there. But again, it goes back to the premise that our God does not change. 
And so these attributes that we see in Christ our Lord, we see in the, the Heavenly Father as well. So um, again, we thank you for joining us here for midweek here this evening. If you have a question or a comment or anything, feel free to leave that in the comment section down below. Uh, until next week, we will say... Uh, Good night to you. We also want to invite you to bring someone to church with you this coming Sunday. Freedom Fellowship, 990 West Henry de Tonte Boulevard in Tontytown, Arkansas. Come, we'll save you a seat 10 o'clock this Sunday. We'll see you then.